Today I wanted to talk about my favorite way of making music recently, and that is with the Ableton Note. App. Ableton released this app, I believe, three months ago, and I've seen a bunch of my uh, colleagues use it, make reviews about it. However, I wanted to get a little bit more time in with this guy before I actually give you my opinion on what it has to offer. With that being said, let's not waste time and just jump straight into it. The first thing you're going to notice is that I have this guy in uh, portrait mode, which you can definitely use it as, and I typically use it on my phone. But for the sake of demonstrating to you how this works, I'm going to use my iPad. You can use it in this factor, which is like in portrait mode, but I tend to use it in landscape, which is, let me just turn this around. I use it in this way when it comes to the iPad and my phone. For some reason, I find that there is more control when it's in this, uh, when it's laid out like this, but there's nothing stopping you in using it in, in portrait mode. First things first, the look of the entire thing. I adore the way this thing looks. If you've ever used Ableton, then in that instance, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. The usability side of this thing is something that I really adore uh, because everything is, seems to be really laid out and you can understand everything at a glance and it just makes me happy to know that you can just jump straight in so this video will have different sections so feel free to jump to the one that is most relevant to you and with that being said i would like to jump into the first section which is who is this for this app was built for people who are on the go people who can't bring with them their you know their guitars and their keyboards but they're on a train traveling somewhere and they have an idea that they need to jog down this gives them the perfect control to jog down on an idea and just finish it later. This is the thing that actually made me happy is that when I realized that this is for people who want to jump into music making and then finish it later on, you know, on their DAW, this is what made me the, the happiest because you can definitely just start a new session and instantly you got a recommendation of instruments. These guys are just suggestions and they don't represent what you should definitely be using. So for example, in this instance, it gave me an option of some drums right here, which, yeah, they sound cool. Whoa, <laughs> that last one was cool. Definitely adore this, the fact that you can just jump right into it and just, it just, immediately start making music on that note since i played a little bit a little bit here you can notice that the moment you start playing notes are being recorded and this is based off of the capture function on ableton i love this but i also have a love hate relationship between the commit button that's how i like to call it, the commit button because the moment you type something you play something and then you commit to it it just it just goes. It's It doesn't ask you for directions. It is made for you to jog down on an idea and then finish it later. It is really fantastic in that sense that, hey, I have this fantastic idea of a drum going tum, ta -tum, ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -tum. and you can definitely keep, keep, the, keep the entire thing going by having the tap tempo here, which is like one, two, three, four, tum, ta -tum, ta -ta -tum, tum, boom, 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 and it immediately just goes and you can just continue it from there. Now, this is something that I wanted to actually stop and point out. The quantization and the note changing is really awkward at times. I haven't found a way for you to delete any of the notes that are on here. So every time I just ha I just don't like something that I did, I quantize it. And if it doesn't work, then I just go in and delete the notes that I don't like by selecting them like that and just go and delete. I'm going to undo that. If you quantize everything, it gives you this very rigid way of just straight down the line, don't ask questions kind of a pattern. And it can feel very constraining in, in, in that sense. Let's, let me open up a session here that I've been working on. Let's use set number three. I don't even know what this is. It was just some drums. Okay. As you can tell right there, just by me playing something and then pressing the capture function down here, if you see it turn, that turns into a little square, you can capture whatever you've just played and that will 
immediately be placed in a loop. It's just fun to mess around with, with these things. Um, it is quite annoying sometimes because your fingers can slip up and you can press something that you don't want to. In regards to that, I much prefer to have a dedicated function like the capture feature. And this is why I said I have a love-hate relationship because sometimes I'm like, yes, that, I'm so glad I did that. At other times it's just, oh my God, I, why did I do this? Like I didn't, li I didn't want to do that. Now I got to delete the entire thing. Things that I like to point out is that it does feel clunky when you use the, the controls. That section right there when it comes to uh changing these guys the the knobs it has a weird thing that i've noticed where if you take your take your finger and just place it on the knob if you go right it doesn't uh, you see right there if i go right it doesn't turn the knob but if i go up it does if i go left it doesn't do anything but if i turn it down it does now watch what happens if i start doing start it up again and start going right now it turns right and if i go left it goes left but if i go up and down it doesn't do anything and that can get really confusing at times i found myself like struggling to record something when i wanted to change the warp for example I, I just try to turn it and my finger will get stuck and it won't do anything so i have to like go back undo something uh, that i've already done and it under undoes like two things instead of one it's it's very confusing in that in that front and i really wish that the software is going to develop as it progresses but for the time being that's my only gripe when it comes to the knobs other than that you have a choice of changing all your uh, sounds so any sounds that you had in ableton that were part of the software like drums samples rhythmics piano keys pads uh, etc all of those guys are right here and you can change them right here, make minute changes. It's not as detailed as being in the DAW, but the positive thing about all of these is the fact that they are saved to your cloud or they can be saved to your cloud if you wish. You can simply just transition from the iPad or from your phone to Ableton and not have a care in the world because, you know, it's just, it's really simple to, to move from one to the other. Since I feel like I've been talking for a little bit and haven't been showing what's been happening so far, let me show you a couple of sets that I've been working on and things that just popped into my head. So overall, I'm having a blast using this thing. Every time I sit on a train or a bus, I just pull out my phone, headphones in, and just start fiddling around with this thing. It just keeps giving and it keeps making you want to create more and more music uh, to the point where you just have this whole pile of stuff that when you get home to, you can just be like a kid on Christmas day, like, oh my God, I have all these things now. It's been fun using it for the last two months. I, I haven't been using it as much as I would like to due to the fact that it has a competitor. That competitor, I will probably make another video on and you will find out hopefully soon enough who, who that is. Another thing that I would like to add is I found some notable bugs that you should be just keep an eye out and hopefully they will fix this uh, in the future because in reality it is all software at the end of the day. So number one is the app closes when adding effects. I've noticed this sometimes when I go and play something like this and I want to change an effect while I am uh, while the music is going I'll just click up here chorus ensemble and let's say subtle funk all right that time it didn't do it thankfully this time it didn't break uh but there were times where i would just add a an effect and the entire app would just shut off and i only found out that it only happens when i have music playing already if i do not have music playing if i stop the recording or the playback and change the effects nothing happens the app, the app just works completely fine the other thing that i had notice is that uh there is some buggy multi-touch stuff happening so like if i press multi multiple guys 
for some reason now everything works but i used to have if i press a couple of notes they would start to freak out and like it would pick up one note then it will pick up another note and it was just all over the place can it not hit yo i don't know what's going on with this one what the final one where i was a little bit annoyed is uh, the cloud synchronization now the cloud works most of the time but sometimes when you want to let's say upload a song to ableton cloud you can do that simply by just me as i pointed out just now tapping these three little dots and go to upload to ableton cloud it's going to upload it to ableton it's going to sync it and then you will be able to see this a specific project in your Ableton. The issue is I had to log in more times than I wanted to. So sometimes it will log me out of my app and sometimes it will log me out of Ableton. I don't know if that is a safety issue or if it's a problem on my end, but I have noticed it, that it happened like six, seven times so far. I do believe it might be a user error, uh, but however, I don't think that that should happen due to the fact that I've used Ableton all this time and none of my other plugins nor my other uh, apps tell me that I'm logged off. But regardless, that's something to think about and it, it, it's not that big of a deal. It works most of the time. It's just that those couple of times it ended up being weird. Yeah, I do have to say that I love this app. It is so fun to use. It is $10, I believe, on the App Store or $5, one of the two. My suggestion is definitely getting it. You will not regret a single, single moment with this thing. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below the subscribe button. And I hope this video helped.